All right, we're going to start in on chapter 3. So we spent a lot of time in chapter 2 uh, learning how to take derivatives of different types of functions. Chapter 3 is when we get to use those derivatives to describe functions. So in the same way that uh, we can use x and y intercepts, um, the vertex of a parabola, the slope of a line, we can use all these things to help us describe uh, those functions. Derivatives give, give us an additional piece of information to help us uh, refine those descriptions and, uh, and uh, get a better picture of what that function is going to look like. So one of the key concepts that we're going to talk about here is, is extrema. So we're talking about minimums and maximums. All right, so extrema include both minimums and maximums. So we have to start off by defining what we mean by that. What do we mean by the maximum of a function or a minimum of a function? And here's the definition. It just means that if f of c is the minimum of some function on an interval i, then that means that the y value there is less than or equal to all the other y values on the interval. And then likewise for the maximum. If f of c is the maximum, then the y value is greater than or equal to any of the other y values on that interval. Okay, so when we talk about minimums and maximums, we can discuss the difference between an absolute maximum or minimum and a relative maximum or minimum. So an absolute maximum on this left function occurs there. There is no There is no absolute minimum. This function continues downward to negative infinity. All right, on this second problem here, we have an absolute minimum here. We have these two points here. They, it's kind of hard to tell from this graph exactly, from this picture, but they look like they're about at the same level. <coughs> so it's not clear that. Um, either one is higher than the other, but here we have um, maximums here and here. All right, And since if they're at the same level, then they are, um, the y values there are greater than or equal to anywhere else in, on the interval or on that function, I'm going to call them absolute maximums. They're the highest points. Okay, This function here second from the right, it doesn't have any absolute maximum because this function continues upward. <coughs> Excuse me. But it does have a relative maximum. So it has a relative maximum there. All right. And that all that means is that in the surrounding area, it's higher than or equal in height to any other point nearby. Right. And we can also see here that we have a relative minimum because that point is uh, has a has a smaller or a, a lower uh, y value than any point uh, near it. But again, notice that we don't have any absolute minimum because this 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 function continues on down. So again, this relative minimum isn't the lowest point on the entire function. It's only the lowest point. Uh, in the immediate vicinity. On the right we have an example of a function that has a relative maximum here. It also has an absolute maximum. So notice that the relative maximum is lower than the absolute maximum. So we could have both types of extrema on a given function depending on how that function is defined. And one thing that we want to take a look at as we're kind of looking at these at these uh, graphs here, note what the derivative is at all these extrema, whether they're um, absolute or or relative. We notice that here we have there, 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 there. Here's a relative minimum that we didn't talk about, and there's an absolute minimum that we didn't talk about there. But you'll notice that all these places, the derivative is either equal to zero 
or it's not defined. Right, it's equal to zero here, 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 and here. But it's not defined at these endpoints. Here and here. And it's also not defined at that sharp turn. All right, so that gives us a clue as to how we're going to find, uh, look for, and then find absolute and relative extrema. So that brings us to this definition of a critical number. A critical number, essentially a critical number is a place where we, uh, where there's a possibility that we're going to have a relative or absolute maximum or minimum. So if the derivative is equal to zero or the derivative uh, doesn't exist, if f is not differentiable, then that x value is considered a critical number, the c itself is considered the critical number of f. So the x values that produce a zero derivative or uh, an undefined derivative give us a critical number. Right? And these critical numbers, therefore, lead us to possible maximums and minimums. So if f has a relative maximum or minimum, then c is a critical number. Right? So that's the only place that our uh, relative maximums and mins can occur. So we're going to discuss this idea of finding extrema on a closed interval. All right, this is, this is important in the sense of when we say just find the extrema, we're talking about absolute. So there's this, this uh, interpreting the problem properly. All right, if we're asked to find the extrema, then we're, we're being asked to find the absolute extrema. All right, so to do that, we're going to find their critical numbers. In order to do that, we have to set the derivative equal to zero or find where the derivative does not exist or is not defined. Once we find those critical numbers, remember those are x values that produce a zero derivative or a derivative that's not defined, we're going to evaluate f at each critical number. So we're actually going to plug that c value or multiple c values back into the original function and find out what the y values are there. All right. We're also going to evaluate f at the endpoints, f of a and f of b. Those are the endpoints of the interval that we're asked to, to use. All right. So we might have multiple critical numbers. So we have value, we've evaluated f at, at possibly multiple critical numbers and at the endpoints. And then we're just going to compare those. We've basically calculated a bunch of y values here. And the smallest value that we have is the minimum, and the largest value that we have is the maximum. So anytime we're asked to find an extreme on a closed interval, this is the process we need to follow. <coughs> 